building your first Pro Tools post-production template. Today we're just going to go through a kind of companion video that's just going to look at how we'd put a template together. Now Callum is going to go through this with you in class also and he may have done that already or this may, you may be watching this beforehand but what we're going to do is over the course of the next few weeks anyway we're going to develop this template and make it more advanced adding more features but initially I really wanted to just take you through the simple first steps and why we work the way we do. There are various different things we have to think about in order to make sure that we can work efficiently and okay, so we can deliver things on budget and on time. So first of all what we're going to do is just take you through the simplicity of setting up Pro Tools getting that initial template together so you'll be, you would be ready to import media from assets and media from your client. So first of all, I'm going to um, load up Pro Tools. I'm going to just let that load up here. It's best to just make sure you are happy with uh, your audio interface and sound card is set up. I'm just using a focus right here. This is on, a, on my Mac system. Great, okay, so initially you're gonna see the dashboard. There are templates available on here for various different types of productions, and there's even a post-production one. In fact, I've got two on here, some are just legacy. But I, th I always think it's better to go through the process yourself so you can really get an idea and an understanding of what's really happening, you know, uh, under, the, under the hood, so to speak. If you use a template that's made, that will work for you, of course, but it's often if you've got to adjust that or change that, then sometimes this can be a bit confusing because you don't know where everything's rooted. So I think it's best to kind of go through the process yourself. So I would cancel this, so we're going to cancel that. And then what we're going to do is just go up to the setup and we're going to go to the IO. And what I'm going to do here is just remove all my IO so we can start from scratch. So I'm going to delete um, all of these. I'm just going to delete all the paths. I'm going to leave actually output one and two. Now this would be different depending on your audio interface, but you should usually have some kind of initial audio output one and two here. So I'm just going to delete those and then on the buses I'm just going to delete all of these two except for the monitor out so I'm just going to delete that there as well so that's going to be our output one and two down here uh, you can see here you've got the output meter path here just make sure that is set to your main audio output and that could be your one and two or if you've got um, more um, outputs on your audio interface just make sure it's selecting the one that you're going to want to um, audition and listen to audio on, or you may be on headphones. And again, for the default out path, you can see here, look, you just want to make sure that you've got stereo and you've got kind of monitor out as well. On the main output here, it's important just to make sure that the output one and two, which is where you can see the little speaker here on the output one and two, that is also uh, highlighted and selected. Audition path one and two, and then the meter path one and two as well. And we'll talk about AFL and PFL pre-fader and after-fader listen soloing at a later date, but I'm sure you're all aware that, that that needs to be set up too for when you've got, uh, you want Pro Tools to auto-route your soloing through your, your auxiliaries and your buses. So we'll just put OK there. First we're going to do, we're going to create a new project. So it's important, uh, and that could be Command N, or it can be Go File and New, New Project. So I think it's really important to make sure that your naming conventions are um, kind of good, it's good working practice to make sure naming conventions are kind of used correctly when you start creating projects. That way you don't get confusion about which is your latest project, what the client is, and it'll help you kind of making sure that you're always working on the right right thing, the right session, the right version, but also you can send things to project to clients easy and easier and more quickly and you can find projects easier. So I always tend to start with the date. So the date is the, uh, it's the 9th today. So I tend to do 09, 010, 24, do alphanumerical. And then basically it's a very simple process of just labeling things with the client, the project, you know, the project or series name and that kind of thing. So for example, here it would be ICMP being our client, the college, uh, SFGTV being the course, which would be the production, you know, the show. And then lastly, what the what it is so that could be an episode number or it could be a name or in this case it could be a, a, your first template so you're going to just call it my first post-production template or um, and then uh, 
you might put a version or mix or anything like that if you were doing that first. But obviously at this point it's just a template, so we'll just leave it like that. Next thing to check is just to make sure the uh, settings are all correct. So on here, you can see here that we've got, um, we need to have things in BWAV. BWAV is a broadcast WAV. So that means that there's, as opposed to using say AIFF, there is basically metadata on the front of all the files. So it means whenever you record anything, whenever you put any file in there, there is metadata on the front of that audio file. So Pro Tools can locate it in time code and reposition that audio if or for whatever reason you need to reconform or you need to re-put audio or drag things back into the session. Next, make sure the sample rate is at 48K in post-production. And really when you're working on anything visually, um, audio is always at 48K. Um, and then also we want to just make sure it's a 24 bit. You can use 32 bit, but the, the industry standard is still 24 bit. And then we're going to make sure it's interleaved. The only thing that's different there is it's just saving you file um, file storage space rather than Pro Tools making two mono files for every stereo file. It's using interleaved, which just shaves you, saves you some storage um, and file size on your project. We're going to prompt for location and then I'm going to create and then Pro Tools will do its thing. And then we're, I'm just going to save this on the desktop, open the session. Lovely. Great. OK, now, so when Pro Tools loads up, its default um, kind of status, its default mode will be in, will be really set up for music as opposed to post-production. So uh, you're gonna, your counter is going to be in minutes and seconds. Um, you're going to have bars and beats and all this kind of other stuff in here that we don't really need. So first of all, we just want to switch everything to be working at time code, at, at, you know, and in, in the correct way for us to, to begin our, our, our projects. What I'm going to do here is I'm just going to switch uh, the counter to time code. And that will switch everything up to time code. And then what I'm going to do here also is I'm just going to I'm just going to change the grid and the nudge to be at one frame. Just use that to one frame like that. And that will just help me basically make sure that I can, you know, move around the audio. Remember, when we're working with visual mediums, um, everything is a frame. You know, all the video is moving one frame at a time. We can work in subframes in more accurate, small increments. But uh, if you're working at the... Uh, density to start with anyway that the video is gives you the option to kind of um, basically uh, work and move things and sync things up so it's good to kind of switch the Pro Tools to that mode. Next on the left hand side here I'm going to basically take off just some of these counters and um, and kind of you know metering them that I don't need. So I'm going to turn off and click this button here and I'm just going to turn off bars and beats, turn off samples, turn off tempo and just turn off the meter. So all I'm left with is the time code and the markers. But there are, you can obviously have to six markers. Um, you can play around with that however you like to use markers. You can even have track markers now and they're very useful for marking out certain things for certain people on a team or however you want to work. So if I just quickly open, so I just want to quickly show you this. Now this is a standard TV channel four in this instance, but it could be the same for any channel for Netflix or for um, uh, a film, you know, studio, a distributor, any, anything like that. Every time you work on a production, there will have been some kind of contract and deal signed. And part of that deal is that there will be you know, an expectation of the different types of mixes and files that the client that you're working for will need to give to the channel and the distributor in order for them to sell it to other territories or to show it on different channels or to just, you know, complete the, the, the job. Now on this technical specification, just quickly, it's good to kind of just talk about this because basically the reason we build a template the way we do is because the, the specifications and the delivery requirements are all part of what we're trying to create. So um, these tech specs will be very long and they have lots of technical information on and they have things for the picture and the vision and all sorts of stuff like that as well. Um, but also it'll have the audio deliverables and the audio specifications, as we can see here in section two from page 15 onwards. If I just spin down to page 15 very quickly, you can see here that the um, it tells us how our dialogue requirements are, our loudness levels. So these are the things that we have to deliver the, the mix to, the specifications that we have to deliver to. Now, we'll cover those a lot of this in later lectures, but I just want to show you this so that you have an idea that this is what you should ask your client for, or you should talk to your client and say, what are the tech specifications and what deliverables do I need to create? And in here, it will tell you these things and we'll go, we'll go through this in more detail another time. So yeah, so there will be standard deliverables. And of course, that doesn't just mean the mix. It also means other files that we might be asked to deliver. So that is often uh, not always the same. But in most cases, you will be asked to break down all the different sub areas of the mix, all the different types of sound into pre-mixed stems or splits 
to give to the client that allows them to re-edit the show. It allows them to, to remix it or to redub the show in a different language very quickly and very easily, revoice it, all these things. So it means that you, you know, you're part of the original production, so you're doing all of this work so that when that you hand over these files, they can send it to other places and other companies to remake the show how they would see fit. So what that means is that it's not just the final mix we have to make. We also have to make a mix for, you know, international delivery. We also have to make um, a mix of just the dialogue, a premix of just the sound effects, a premix of the music and voiceover and a standard. And this is this in this template, we're looking at a kind of a standard broadcast template. However, all templates kind of really would stem from this point. They can become more complicated, but they also will have a level of uh, similarity to this. They'll all just be expanded from this point. So first of all, what I'm going to do is we're going to create some tracks. So in order, so if we have to create a, a mix, we have to create a sub mix or a DME or ME, and we have to create a dialogue mix, an effects mix, and a music mix, and a voiceover mix, set of stems, we have to create all those sort of tracks. So what I'm going to do is create some new tracks, and that's Command Shift N, or you go to track and you put new track in the menu. So I'm going to create some mono tracks here, and let's just start with voiceover. So I'm going to put VO and I'm going to put two. Just like that. Now, let's just turn objects off for now. And comments. Thank you, those. Right. So here, so I've got voiceover one and voiceover two. I'm going to change voiceover two to GVO, which stands for guide voiceover. So I'll put guide voiceover. It's just so more clear. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to move this up to there. I'm going to turn the read off and I'm going to mute that. Now, the idea of that is that most of the time when we get shows, TV shows or broadcast shows, um, there will be a scratch voiceover in there, a sort of guide voiceover that they've used to build and create the show story. And often this is good to have as a guide and we leave it in the session. So when we're re-recording the voiceover properly with the with the final voiceover artist or um, presenter, um, it means we have a guide of how long that voiceover has got to be, where it's got to fit. And we can sort of see how that's that's working against all the all the images and, and we can construct and work to to fit the voiceover quicker, quickly and more efficiently. So we leave that there like that and the voiceover track like that for now. Then what we're going to do is we're going to build the work tracks and then we're going to create auxiliaries or buses in order to, you know, streamline our mixing process. So next I'm going to do command shift down again, create some new tracks. I'm going to create four mono dialogue tracks. So I'm going to put dialogue here and I'm going to just put dial and then put OK. Basically, it's going to create four dialogue tracks. Now we can double click the little palette. We can change colors. So I'm going to just put the guide as orange. I'm going to put the voiceover as blue and then the dialogue. And you can change the colors to have whatever you see fit, basically, whatever you like. But I do think coloring the tracks is quite useful because it gives you a sort of very quick overview of where things have changed in the project. So next, what we're going to do is we're going to create some effects tracks. Now, because sound effects often in this instance will be coming from various sources, there will be mono and there will be stereo tracks. So in order for that to be kind of worked with in our template, we need to create some mono and stereo ones. So I'm going to create four mono ones and then I'm going to, I'm going to just call that effects. Four of those. And then I'm going to create four stereo tracks here. So four stereo tracks and I'm going to put effects there too. And what that's going to do there is that it's going to create four mono and four stereo tracks. So effects one to eight effectively. Um, and I quite like my effects tracks to be red. I think that's quite nice. So yes, yeah, so we've got our guide voice, we've got a guide voice, voiceover, we've got our dialogue and we've got our effects tracks. So next uh, we need to do music. Now we also need to do Atmos tracks as well. And I think we're gonna put that in in a second. So four, four stereo Atmos, four atmosphere tracks or backgrounds, backgrounds, not to be confused with Atmos for dialogue. That's different, but we'll talk about that another time. So Atmos there, so I've just done uh, two in fact. So we'll just do two and then just basically create another two there. There you go. So I'm just going to make these all. If you press, if, whenever, when you're doing anything in Pro Tools, if you hold down Alt or Option, um, it will do to all. So if I click on Option All and I click on the top little arrow there and I put Micro, I'm just making everything small there so we can see the screen a bit better. I'm going to make Mini and do that so we can just see what's going on a little bit. Next, I'm going to create uh, 
two in this instance, just two music tracks. Now remember also that once we have all the routing and everything set up on this template, um, if you need more tracks, you can just duplicate the tracks. And I'll show you that in a second. So I'll create the music tracks here, two stereo music tracks. And I'm going to make those yellow. And then again, so for example here, if I wanted to make this a third music track, I would just basically, I could just duplicate this here like that, just at the bottom there. Now, um, I'm not gonna do that right now because I'll do the routing first and then I'll show you how that really is quite a useful way to work because all the routing's kind of done already. So when you duplicate that track, you'll duplicate its routing, it sends any other plugins or anything else you have on the template. So I'll just make that smaller. And then what we're now going to do is I'm just going to make it a bit bigger so we can see what we're happening with the IO. So just here like that. So what I want to do on here is I just want to start create, start sending these tracks to auxiliaries or buses and so that I can start to create some kind of, you know, processing and kind of like sends and kind of like start to think about creating my deliverables. First of all, guide voiceover. That does not go anywhere. That is just scratch. It's just for our preview so we don't put that into the signal chain. And again, the only thing we should ever really be monitoring from is the main out, which everything is rooted into in our signal chain. That way is a good way of us knowing that if we can hear it, in most cases, it's going to go into our mix. So anything that shouldn't be going to the mix shouldn't be rooted into that signal chain. So first of all, I'm just going to click on voiceover and I'm going to click on the monitor output of the IO and I'm just going to put new track. And I'm going to create a stereo auxiliary input and I'm going to call this VOX. And for now, I'm just going to put this after and put it after the work tracks, but we will move all these in a minute. Next, I'm going to do this for the dialogue. So if I select all the dialogues by clicking the first dialogue track and then holding down shift and then clicking on the last one. So click on the dialogue, hold down shift, click on the last one there. Then in order in Pro Tools to uh, do to selection, uh, we use the shortcut option and shift. So if you hold down option and shift keys and then click on the output, and put new track. What that's going to do is that's going to route this selection to those tracks. So now I'm going to call this uh, DX and you'll see that basically, um, let's put it there, but you'll see basically here that basically those are all now routed to the, to the DX auxiliary. And we can do the same for the effects and this is kind of a faster way of again working our, 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 rather than doing each one individually we can work a little bit faster. So again, click on the first effects track, hold down shift, click on the last one, effects eight, and then I'm going to hold down option and shift, and I'm going to basically select the output again, new track, and then I'm going to call this FXX, like that, so an FX auxiliary, and I'm just going to take, take, that, take that off, so it's going to put it at the bottom of the effects tracks. And again, we repeat this process. So for Atmos, click on the first track, hold down shift, click on the last track, then it's option shift again, click on our output, new track and then it's basically uh, it is Atmos X or Atmos or Atom X or whatever you prefer. Okay. And then the same for music. So here, new track, uh, MX, like that. There you go. And so there you can see the routing here, you can see that routing has kind of been copied through. And that, that's not, now we, that's, that means we now have an auxiliary for music, we now have an auxiliary for effects, we now have an auxiliary for dialogue and for voiceover. But what we now need to do is create a submix from those auxiliaries to then eventually create our final mix. So I'm just going to, if I hold down command, I can basically select the tracks I want in between other tracks. So just holding down command. And then, and then what I can do is if I just drag the bottom one, what Pro Tools will do is it will bunch them all up. So bunch of them all up to the top there. So now they're all together. It's a lot easier to, to see how your routing is going and to route these if you've got them all together like this. Next up, uh, what I'm going to do is I want to create a, a music effects mix, but without the voiceover. So kind of a mix minus, basically. And this is this is used primarily so that clients can reversion things abroad with a new voiceover track very quickly. And it's a cheap, efficient way of reversioning a show. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to route uh, the dialogue, the effects, the atmos and the music. I'm going to root all those to, and that's again selecting all of those holding shift. I'm going to hold down option shift and I'm going to click on the monitor output. I'm going to put new track and I'm going to call this ME DME. And that's dialogue, music and effects. 
and that's another auxiliary a stereo and that's going to go pop that at the bottom and you'll see that they're all now routed to the dme so next what i need to do is i need to now create the final mix which is our output which is basically the mix we hear the mix everyone else is going to hear the, the final the final mix the print mix so i select the voiceover and then i hold down command and then what i'm going to do is i'm just going to do option shift again new track and i'm going to do f mix Like that. So you can now see the voiceover is going over all of the others and it's going to the final mix. And so the DME is also doing the same. Now, a good way to test if this routing is working correctly is to put a bit of tone on a track. So if you just have the cursor, which is F7 or the cursor here, you can just select any area. And if you use Control Shift 3, it'll basically create some tone. Uh, it'll cons it's a consolidate clip by adding tone by adding the control in there. So if I now play, Basically, you can now hear that's now playing tone. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if you can hear that. Um, but either way, so now what I can do is I can just basically play that tone and I can see the signal path and I can check that the signal, that the audio is being routed correctly through the signal path. So for dialogue, I should be hearing coming out the dialogue track into the dialogue bus, DME and final mix. So that's kind of working correctly. And I can do the same for uh, effects. And you see that's correct as well. It's coming out of the effects track into the effects bus and then through the DME and final mix chain. Just to point out here, the way I've got Atmos routed is straight into the DME. Some deliverables, you may be asked to route the Atmos background sounds into the effects track, into the effects um, auxiliary before it goes into the DME. Um, but again, like all these things, every tech spec, this is like a standard, standard kind of template for most tech specs and most specifications of deliverables you'd be asked to make but there are always going to could be slight variations and slight alterations to this so it's always best to check the document or check with the production company to see what you what is you know required of um of deliverables from your from your project from your session and mix so once we've done that and we check that the next thing we want to do is we just want to basically add um, a couple more things. We want to do print tracks. So then, so that these tracks will be the effectively the tracks we're going to create our deliverables onto. Now, you don't obviously have to record them into the session. You can offline bounce, but it's quite good to have these tracks there because then you can have them there as a safety for backup, or you can actually just play them out. And actually, to be fair, it's always a good thing anyway when you finish the project to to actually watch the whole thing through and listen to it. So you are you are kind of a hundred percent checking everything back, and you're not distracted by doing an edit or distracted by doing something else. What I want to do here is I want to basically send most of these, not all of these. I'm going to just open up the sends uh, tab here as well, and I'm going to basically uh, create print track sends from each of these auxiliaries. So. Um, but if I hold down control, what control allows me to do is root a track to more than one output. So if I click on voiceover X, I can basically go new track. And on here, I've got stereo and I'm going to change that to audio track. And I'm going to put the VOP. Voiceover print. So I'm going to just do that. And then I'm just going to, that's going to appear at the bottom there. And you'll see that's got voiceover print and it's going to the monitor out. And I'm just going to mute it. And then what I'm going to do is um, I'm just going to check and see, see, it's got a little plus there. So that little plus basically tells us that it's going to more than two places and you can see I've hovered over it. So it's now telling you it's going to the final mix and it's also going to the voiceover print. So I want to do the same thing for all of these, except for the DME, which I'll come to in a second. So I'm just going to hit hold down control again. I'm going to go new track and then I'm just going to go, uh, I'm going to basically go DX print and that's going to create dialog print and that's going to put that at the bottom as well. And again, I'm going to mute it. And then also I'm going to do is do this for the effects. Save for Atmos. Same for music. And then same for the final mix. Now, 
I've skipped over the um, DME because most of the time, when it comes to the the DME, the mix the mix minus or the the pre you know the sort of sub mix, we are often asked to deliver this without ducking for the voiceover or without ducking. And that means it's a flat mix. So it means that when they revoice it in a different language, it's very easy for the mixer, the new mixer, to kind of come in and just take that 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 mix file, that wave file, um, put it into their session, and they can reduck the 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 show themselves around the new voiceover because different languages and different voiceover will be different lengths. And on here, I'm actually going to do a pre send. So I'm on this on the output here. I'm going to do new track, but I'm going to basically put DME here print like that so that's still an audio track exactly the same but it's just going to go at the bottom here but it's going to go on a send this allows me to basically do a pre-fader send so it allows me to basically it means that when that dme is ducked it is not going to uh those those duckings those those dips aren't going to go into that printed submix but they will go into the final mix so yeah so that's that um so a couple more things we just need to do we just need to put some uh, a little bit of mastering on here initially. Um, again, not going to do go too far into this right now, but just a little bit of kind of um, processing just just for safety. What we tend to do is if we're mixing to loudness, we tend to put some dynamics on here. So uh, you can use Pro Limiter, it's a good one to use that comes with all your Pro Tools setups. So just bring this in here, and we just tend to put this at minus three or four, like so. And then that's just going to be like a true peak safety. So nothing clips as we'll go into in more detail later. When you're mixing to loudness, uh, your average is going to be around here, around sort of minus sort of, you know, sort of 20 really. So you're never really going to get that close to this level. But if there's an explosion or there's something very loud that's momentary, which you're allowed to have, uh, this just is a safety net so it doesn't clip and, and, and go into the red. And then if you hold down, and I'll just move that to the end here. So it's right at the end of the processing chain in case anything you put anything else on there, which we will um, in future, but not right now. And then if I hold down option, I can just click and I can just copy that setting all the way down onto all of those print, those buses, those master buses. Now we never automate these. These always stay flat at zero because these are creating our deliverables. And if we were to start adjusting the levels on there, this would start to create differentiations and we wouldn't really understand or know where our deliverables um, are. So it's really important that, you know, those kind of don't, we don't kind of mix with those. We mix on the work tracks or as I'm about to show you, we mix with VCAs. So with VCAs, what we're going to do is I'm going to, they're like virtual control attributes. And so basically what they do is they're going to, they're going to be what we'll do our sub mixing with. We won't actually use the um, master auxiliaries. I'm just going to go down to the group section here. And I'm just going to create some new groups. In fact, what I'll do first actually is I'll create the VCAs. So we're just going to create, uh, how many do we need? One, two, three, four, five, six. We need seven. So we need seven VCAs. And then what we'll do, we'll put these right at the top. And we're just going to label those. So the VO, X, so Command, Shift, and Enter. You can then skip through the track names as you rename them. So click on this one and we're just going to go DX VCA and then uh, FX VCA and then Atmos VCA and then Music VCA and then DME oh, sorry yeah, VCA and then FMix uh, FMix yeah, well, we, you know, we don't really need that one, but we'll put it in anyway. So uh, we haven't created any groups yet. We need to group the tracks and assign them to the VCAs. So if we go to our groups here, what we can do is if we go to our tracks, we can select the track we want. If we go new group, call command G, VO's in there. We can call this VO. And then what we can do is we can assign that to the VO VCA, like so. And then we do the same for dialogue, select dialogue one to four. We go new group or command G. And then we're going to call this DX. And we're just going to assign this to the dialogue VCA. And then same with the effects. Effects. And 
and then Atmos, Atmospheres, Background, Squan G, Atmos, Atmos, and then basically we're just, yeah, we're just going through here and just assigning the right tracks to the right things. So music as well, Command G. Like so. Now, obviously with the DME and the final mix, we don't really need the final mix VCA um, as such, but um, it's always good to possibly have it. So what I tend to do is I just hide that, make it inactive in case I need it, but just you know, you know, for end of mix like trimming, but usually you don't need to. So what we're going to do here is just select that one and then I select the DME here, sorry. And then because obviously that doesn't have a work track because that is a submix. But remember, we've still got the pre the pre send, so that's fine. So we go new group, then go DME. And then basically create that there. Like that. And you can see here if I now um, bring it, open this VCA up, this fader, which would be a fader on your mixing desk. If I move this down, you can see the blue line appears here, and that is showing me what the VCA is doing. That, so that shows me the difference. So if I put, actually record some automation here, you see here, I just record this. This will be like if I was ducking for voiceover. And then I bring it back up and I turn that off like that. Basically, you can see here that is showing me quite a nice kind of visual information, visual guide of what the VCA is doing against my DME, but it's not lowering the um, uh, the DME level um, uh, fader itself, it's just lowering the, the transition there, so it's quite useful to see. On our, our template as well, we'd probably be putting other processing onto the, onto the tracks, but um, for now we'll just kind of leave it at that and then we'll do another more advanced video for the next uh, step when we add in EQ and processing and all those other bits.